Hey, church family, thanks for joining me today on Wednesday for our Bible study and prayer. Been very encouraged to see how many uh, people are tuning in on Wednesdays, and I want to encourage you to continue to do that. Uh, we are really trying to take this time on Wednesdays and uh, as a church family to, to pray together and to uh, study the Word of God. And so I want to encourage you to continue to do that, share this with people uh, who might benefit as well. I hope that you'll join me tonight as we pray. If you didn't get the prayer bulletin, uh, let us know. We'll email that to you. And as we mentioned on Sunday, there's such power, so, uh, such uh, uh, strength that comes when we pray and when we pray together as a church. And so especially now, uh, it's just, again, a further reminder that we need to be praying one for another. Let's pray for our country. Let's pray for our uh, government leaders and officials, our president. Let's pray for the upcoming election. Let's pray for the health of our city, uh, of our communities, of our state. Uh, let's just pray for our law enforcement officers. Uh, let's pray for our church uh, and just pray for one another. And so I hope that you'll join me tonight as we do that. Just a couple of other quick reminders. Remember our small groups and they're going well. And I want to encourage you to be a part of that if you're not. Remain if you are. Uh, we, we're doing well. Our kids ministry at 11 o'clock on Sundays is doing great. And our kids are growing. They're in a contest. So parents, make sure your kids are there on Sundays. Make sure you register for the service at 11. Uh, also, our teens are meeting every Friday night for our Friday Night Live at 6 o'clock. And so uh, we're, we're thankful that they're growing and getting together and building community and then several adult opportunities as well. So I want to encourage you just to get connected and stay involved. Uh, also, remember, this is our missions emphasis month. We're doing adopt a missionary. I think we have about 15 missionary families still yet to be adopted for prayer, for uh, correspondence. And so if you'd like to be a part of that this Sunday, you can definitely do that. Or if you're not able to get out, just email us and we'll we'll get you set up so that you can participate uh, as well in our Adopt a Missionary program. And I hope that our church will do more for worldwide missions than we've ever done before. Lastly, and we'll share more about this on Sunday, but uh, one ministry we, we truly enjoy partnering with is the Borough Pregnancy Counseling Center right here in Queens. And they've done so much to help so many ladies uh, and men, to be honest, uh, who are going to be uh, fathers and mothers providing counseling and resources and even providing hope and letting them know and teaching them many times of the importance of, of life and, and God's uh, desire and, and God's purpose for them. So uh, every year they, they uh, do a big fundraiser and uh, they did so this past week, but it's an opportunity for us as a church to help. And if you'd like to help, we're going to share some information with you on Sunday and you can certainly give uh, and uh, continue to pray for them and add them to your prayer list if you haven't been praying for them. Also, Charlie Schaefer just wanted me to say a big thank you from the bottom of his heart. He was so encouraged and uh, just overwhelmed, to be honest, by your love and your show of support for him last Sunday. And from the reception and the cards and just the conversations and so many of you gave love gifts, uh, he was just overwhelmed. So Charlie made it back home uh, yesterday. Uh, be praying for him in his next chapter uh, in his life and ministry. And uh, we just thank God for him and be praying for those who were trained, those who worked alongside him these last few months. And as they continue to carry on a lot of these ministries in which he was involved. I want to ask you to take your Bible tonight and turn back to that Old Testament prophet book, the book of Jonah. So many of us are familiar with Jonah. We started a study last week and I'm excited about it. Uh, obviously, for many of us, we know Jonah's story and uh, was something that we had even uh, uh, been taught uh, as a child. But there's just such uh, transparency. There's this uh, such personal application in this biography about his life. And you remember, we've been discussing the will of God. Uh, this uh, biography reminds us that God has a plan and God has a purpose and God has instructions for every one of our lives. Uh, it is his will. Uh, in Jonah's case in chapter one, we're, we're told that God speaks to this prophet and declares that his will, his purpose, his plan for Jonah is to go east to Nineveh, the capital of the Assyrian Empire, and to preach repentance uh, to the Assyrians. 
And it was very clear. We were reminded last week that God's will for our lives will be clear. Uh, those times when we're not certain what to do, it's either a timing issue, it's either uh, that we're not prepared or maybe in a position to, to hear God, uh, or we are uh, going in an opposite direction and, and because of that we can't see what God has for us. But make no mistake, when God wants to reveal His will to us, it's very clear. And He always uh, reveals through His Word. We're told in, in chapter 1, verse 1, that the word of the Lord came to Jonah and told him, Arise and go and cry or preach against the city of Nineveh. And I hope that this week you have been challenged just to stay in the word. That was the challenge from, from last Wednesday night. Just continue to read. Let God speak to your heart in whatever needs that you have in your life and whatever burdens that uh, that that you are trying to, to work through and handle decisions that need to be made. Listen, the Word of God speaks God's will into our lives, and, and we need to be prepared and listening and putting ourselves in a position so that His Word might speak. But I want us to notice here in verse number 3, where the Bible says, but... And we're going to continue this thought tonight about God's will. But Jonah rose to flee or to run, not to the city of Nineveh, but unto Tarshish. The truth is that as clearly as God reveals his will to us, uh, we as clearly and as freely have the ability to reject his will in our life. Uh, it's sad, but it's true. God does not force us to accomplish His will in our lives. Our, our loving Savior, our loving Creator, has so perfectly designed a blueprint for your life and for mine, and it would only make sense that the one in whom, as believers, we we trust to, to secure our forgiveness and to secure our eternity, we would trust to lead us every day of our lives, and we would never think about saying no. However, so often we do what Jonah has done, and we reject. We are given that free will. Think through the scriptures. Every man and every woman who's ever lived has been given that option to reject God's will, all the way back to Adam and Eve. But I want us to understand that when we reject God's will, there are always, always consequences to that. And it's also very revealing of specific truths in our lives. Notice that the Bible says, verse 3, but usually when that little conjunction comes up in our conversations or in our story, it, it's, it's a negative. It usually means that, that an excuse is coming. And for Jonah, he had uh, a number of excuses, no doubt, that he used before God as to why he would not nor could not go to the city of Nineveh. I mentioned this last week that Assyria were, were arch enemies, the Assyrians were, of the Israelites. They brutalized them, tortured them. Eventually, Israel would be led into captivity by them, and there was no love lost. And Jonah, this prophet, this one who prided himself in being a man who, who heard from God and who delivered God's message, no matter how difficult, uh, it was he who had this opportunity to, to go and chose to, to resist and to reject. As a matter of fact, we're told that he rises up and he flees to Tarshish, which is the exact opposite way from the presence of the Lord. So he goes down to Joppa, there he finds a ship going even further east to Tarshish. He pays the fare and he goes down in the bottom of the ship and he hides in an effort to hide from the presence of the Lord. Jonah was starting this process of trying to run from God's will. I think we all understand that none of us can really successfully run from God's uh, uh, sight from God's knowledge, 
and yet Jonah attempts to do this as we often have done in our own lives. And it shows that there are deeper issues with us as we're with Jonah when we reject God's will in our life. When we at times know what we should do and yet we reject that, it reveals many things about us. A couple of things that we see from Jonah's life that I think are also true in our lives when we reject God's leading. It reveals that what is important to God is really not as important to us. And I think that's important because for so many of us as believers, we pride ourselves in saying that not my will but thine be done. And we sing hymns such as I surrender all and I have decided to follow Jesus. And, and I think uh, our spirit often is willing but our flesh causes a problem because it's so weak. And when we begin to debate God, we begin to make excuses, we begin to try to argue a point or come up with an alternative plan or to justify some things in our lives, and all of us have been guilty of these things, it should also at that moment be uh, revealing to us that perhaps what God thinks is important is not so important to us. Jonah, a prophet, Jonah, who got direct messages from God, uh, Jonah, who to this point had been willing to do all that God had told him to do, all of a sudden decides that doing what God wants is not uh, a priority, that in his life there are better things he can do and, and should do. And he chooses to say no when our priorities and God's priorities don't match, sadly, we often go with our priorities. Some of us have an extremely hard time obeying God because we have our priorities settled in our mind, that this is what's important to me, this is how I see my life going, these are the decisions I've already made and I don't want to unmake these decisions. And we're okay if God's will doesn't contradict uh, our plans and our priorities. But if at times they do, our human nature tends always to follow and to uphold our priorities. And we find ourselves rejecting God's will in our life. At times, if we're honest, we would even have to admit that God's plans for us are distracting that they would pull us away from what we're trying to accomplish. This is what I want for my family. This is what I want for my retirement. This is what I want for my comfort. This is what I think would cause me to be most successful. And God, why do you keep asking me to do these things? Why do you keep entertaining other ideas? Why, why, why do these uh, thoughts and your teachings from your word cause me conflict? They serve as a distraction at times. The reality is for many of us, we are not seeking to wholeheartedly 100% do God's will, but we are seeking to get God's approval for our designed will for our lives. And that will always lead to insufficiency, to a lack of satisfaction, and ultimately to missing God's will for our lives. You see that with Jonah. God, there's got to be another way. For all we know, perhaps he's thinking, I'll go preach the gospel, but I'll just go to another city. How can that be a bad thing? But yet it was not being obedient to God's will and God's plan. You find that when we say no to God, that it often reveals that what's important to him is not as important to us. It often reveals, too, that we have another alternative plan working. Even if at the time we uh, don't, we find an alternative plan. But again, for many of us, we have our thoughts, we have our expectations, we have our dreams, and all of a sudden God at times may seem to lead in a different way. And that should reveal to us when we have that angst and we have that, that, that struggle and that tension that, wait a minute, I, there is another plan 
that I guess I am pursuing in my life. And it needs to help us to evaluate what's most important. Jonah goes to Joppa. And what do you know when he gets there? There is no ship going to Nineveh. And that would make sense because Nineveh was to the east across the land. But guess what? He found a ship going even further west into to what is today Turkey, to Tarshish. So, whoa, well, that, that must be what I need to do. And he set himself up to, to be able to justify his actions by putting himself in places that he knew would not lead him to do what God wanted him to do and just would further compound or build his case of justification as to why he didn't go to Nineveh but went somewhere else. And what you and I have to understand is every time God leads us, every time we get a word from him, if we're truly being diligent in the word, that God speaks to my personal life and my personal needs and to my personal direction. And when he does, we need to understand if we don't already have something in the works, um, that the devil will definitely make sure to provide an alternative, that there will always be uh, other things there to, to, he hopes, mislead us and to to be held by us and to be pursued by us. And though they may look good on paper, and quite frankly, they might even be supported by, by countless people and the money might be good and uh, all of those things that we use for justification, if we're honest at the end of the day, we would have to admit, but it's not what God asked me to do. However, it was a great viable option or so we thought. And it reveals at times that we are pursuing other plans other than what God wants. The devil will always make sure of that. He is not God where he knows everything, but he's been around a long time and he knows how human nature works and he knows what we like to hear. He knows what appeals to us and he will always provide it. And so that's why, again, I circle back to what we spoke about last week. Those scriptures are vital because we start with the scriptures, not just all circumstances, because the devil can manipulate circumstances, but what does the Lord say? Thus saith the Lord. And do I have confirmation from his word? Is it in accordance to his word? Does it go against his word? Let's start there. But then understand when I'm struggling, when I'm battling, that that means there probably is another plan that I'm wanting to pursue, whether I realized it or not. And I'm going to have to evaluate that. And am I willing to trust God rather than the plans that I have made? You can see all throughout the scripture where men and women felt like what they thought was best. I think about Naaman in Second Kings chapter 5 who comes from Syria to be healed of leprosy. And he goes and sees Elisha and Elisha doesn't speak to him. As a matter of fact, Elisha sends his servant and they give him a simple instruction. Go to the dirty Jordan river, dip yourself seven times and you'll be healed. And Naaman was so upset and he was so angry that he didn't get the respect he felt he deserved, that he didn't get the audience that he demanded, that he was being asked to do something below him, beneath him. And he uses that statement, but I thought, and thanks be to God, there were other people around him that finally convinced him to do this in his mind, trivial uh, practice, but he does. And what happens, God miraculously works. We know God's ways aren't our ways and his thoughts aren't our thoughts. And so often we think, but this is what I think. This is what I have concluded. This is what uh, I have determined to be best in my experience, in my life, from, from the things that, that, that I have concluded. And yet we are so often are reminded God's ways are better than ours. And God works in such a way so he gets the glory and he works in such a way where we have to walk by faith uh, and not according to our wisdom. We can reject God's will, but when we do, we're reminded that we don't probably love some of the things as much uh, as he loves uh, his plan. His purpose in many cases is truly not uh, our objective. And we're also reminded that our natural reasoning will always get us into trouble. 
And as you read, Jonah gets in this boat and verse four, but the Lord, and here we go, and there's the change, and he sends out a great, great wind. Uh, I'm so thankful God's not willing to give up on us. And we mentioned this, that's one of the themes, but he's compassionate to those who repent. He keeps at it and he, he still desires to use us. And how many of us have blown opportunities and missed God's calling and haven't made decisions in his will, but done what we thought was best. And, and because of that, we suffer the consequences and it didn't work out like we had hoped and still living with some of those uh, difficulties today, but God still loves us. But we're reminded that we're not to be wise in our own eyes. God's will, God's way truly should be sought for and desired and pursued. And we need to be uh, aware that our ways are not his ways. Think about this, that when we truly are surrendered to God, when we truly are uh, walking a life of faith, it will always be revealed in our obedience. So we can say we have faith and we're walking after God, but if we're being disobedient to his will in our life, then that is quite a contradiction. A true life of faith says, yes, Lord, and follows, even when it doesn't make sense, even when it goes against our plans and our agenda and our logical thinking. A true life of faith walks in obedience to God's will and God's word. But also notice that uh, if I am seeking in my life to remove myself from the presence of the Lord, then I, that is a precursor to me disobeying the will of God and finding myself uh, far away from Him. As I look at my life and as you look at yours, are you following Him? Or are you f seeking to make excuses? Are you seeking to, to do things your own way? Uh, are, are you seeking to kind of run from God's presence and, and stay away from his word? And I, I don't want to hear it. And by the way, you can see that on a practical level um, when, when there's the avoidance of Bible reading and avoidance of the church and uh, spiritual conversations. And usually when we're doing our thing and running our way, that we don't want God's voice in our in our ear and that should be a red flag for you and for me and so the choice is yours and the choice is mine God has a specific will a specific purpose a specific plan and he'll make it very very clear and he makes it clear through his word and as we said last week maybe it's big decisions and uncertainties just do what you know the word says to do now and stay faithful in those things. I think it was Mark Twain, the, the writer that said, there's a lot about the Bible I don't understand, but that's not what causes me problems. What causes me problems are the truths that I do know the Bible commands me to do. So start with what you know, be faithful with it, and don't let your thoughts, your logic, your wisdom, your plans, the devil's counterfeit, deter us from following in obedience to the Lord. We can do that, but there are dire consequences to that. May God help us to truly say, I surrender all, Lord, and as you lead, I'll follow. And may God help us to be men and women who follow his will. Next week, we'll continue this thought about the will of God, and we'll talk about the risk of it, but how the reward is far greater than the risk. Let's pray. Lord, help us to be men and women who follow your will. It's not easy. You didn't call us to that which is most easy, but you called us to that which is most necessary in our lives. Lord, forgive us. It's okay to dream and to plan, but so often we allow those priorities to take precedent rather than your word and your will. And when they conflict, Lord, we often follow our logic and our wisdom, and we struggle and we suffer because of it. Lord, let us truly be men and women who walk by faith as is evidenced by our obedience, that we won't seek to run from you and avoid you. But Lord, I pray that we would be willing to follow you. So tonight, Lord, as we go to prayer, let us be men and women who come with faith believing and use us this week to fulfill your purpose and plan. We pray we love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Hey, God bless you, church. See you on Sunday for one of our four services in the morning or in the Bronx on Sunday evening. Be sure to sign up for the 11 o'clock. Have a great day.